Hey everyone, just a quick note here. So everything that you're about to hear in this video was recorded long before we knew that Liko and Roy were going to be the new protagonists for the upcoming series, Pokemon 2023. We had no news on the future of the anime, so I'm probably gonna reference that multiple times in this video. I wanted to put this note out here because I know how YouTube works, I know how people watch videos, they usually just watch the beginning and they don't watch all the way to the end sometimes, so I wanted to put this note right here in the beginning that everything that I'm saying, about to say in this video moving forward was all recorded months before we knew about Liko and Roy, before we knew about Ash leaving, blah 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 blah, or if he's even leaving, I don't even know still, as of the making of this video, all we know is that he's not the main protagonist anymore. But yeah, I just wanted to put that in there, I'll probably also put notes on the screen saying that this was long before we knew what was happening, so keep that in mind that everything I'm going to be seeing in this video was before we knew about Liko and Roy or anything happening after Journeys, blah 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 blah. Alright, now let's move on into the story. When are they going to retire Ash Ketchum? They should go ahead and replace Ash already. Ash should have long been succeeded by a new protagonist by now. Whether we love Ash or hate Ash, I'm sure there's one thing that we can all agree on, it's that at some point in our time watching the Pokemon anime, we've probably all heard comments like this. Now, there are a lot of people out there who think that Ash should have been replaced at some point already in the series, and that they should have brought in a new protagonist already to take his place. There are some people who believe that the anime should have taken the same rules as the Pokemon Adventures manga series and started with new protagonists at the beginning of each saga or chapter, which would coincide with the brand new games and a new generation. Now, we can all talk to the ends of time about whether it would be a good idea to replace Ash or a bad idea, but regardless, I think it's still interesting to think about in general, what if Ash had been replaced? What if the Pokemon anime decided to be like Pokemon Adventures and they started with a brand new protagonist each time the newest generation was released? I've been thinking about that a lot lately and I thought to myself, what if I did a series like that? Because I've already done some series about how I would rewrite Ash's journeys, but I hadn't really done anything thinking about what if Ash had never continued past Kanto. And I really think that I might want to do a series like that. So I've decided that I'm going to do that series at some point in the future, but before I get to that, I really want to just make a video to explain why I'm doing that series and the goals that I wish to accomplish in that series. And I want to put that out really early. I'm telling you guys right now that this series probably won't come out anytime soon, probably not until some point next year, since as you know, I still want to do my rewrites and official series for doing series like Unova, Alola, and Galar especially, just writing that story since Ash never went to Galar. But I also would love to do a kind of series on the side where I discuss what would an anime series be like without Ash. So I also would really love to have your guys' feedback for things you'd like to see. But before we get into any of those things, let me first go into the goals that I want to accomplish with this series. So with all that introduction out of the way, let's get into this video. So let's start with talking about the goals I want to accomplish with this series. First things first, let's get into the biggest one. I want to show off the multiverse, specifically the version differences between the two games. Now, I already know people are going to hear this and think, what do you mean multiverse? Are you about to create a series with like 10,000 different universes or something? What, what do you mean? So let me explain that. Up until, I guess, Gen 5, most of the games didn't really have huge extreme version differences. So it's understandable that the anime really didn't need to do much different for the show. They kind of just did one show and incorporated elements from both versions here and there. You know, of course, you know, it wasn't really a big deal. But as time has gone on, the games have become a bit more, I guess, a bit stronger with the version differences out there, mainly starting with black and white. You know, we had the black city and white forest differences. We had Draiden as I and Iris as different gym leaders. Of course, they had the same type specialty, the same team, so it wasn't really anything too, too huge. But version differences have been a bit increased in variety and volume in recent years, especially when you were looking at games like Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield, and especially the coming up Scarlet and Violet. The version differences are just really, really big. Similarly, we also haven't really been getting third versions as we used to in the past. 
you know, with the third versions, those were pretty much the ways to determine the canon version of the generation. You know, we weren't picking between Diamond and Pearl anymore. It was pretty much just said that Platinum was the definitive version of Gen 4 story. And again, with things like that, the anime could easily just, you know, incorporate the story of Platinum when it came to the big, you know, climax and villain arc. They would just do whatever was done with Platinum. So naturally, it made sense that in years past, the anime hadn't really needed to acknowledge anything like the multiverse. But as the games have gotten more and more different between the versions, I think that's something that the anime really would need to start addressing, which they kind of did. If we look at Gen 5, the very first movie for the black and white series, they did two separate movies. Yes, the movies were pretty much the same with only minor differences. The biggest one, of course, being the legendary dragon being portrayed positively and the one being portrayed negatively. But aside from that, you know, the movies were pretty much the same. But again, they went out of their way to make two separate movies because the stories of black and white were pretty much the most different that we had gotten. You know, the differences between the whole story of truth versus ideals, that was pretty big. And like I said, the major version differences, the locations, the gym leaders, rotation and triple battles were handled differently in each game. So yeah, it made sense that as time went on, they would start showing differences in the anime. Gen 6 kind of took a step back from that because I guess because they were porting everything to 3D, they weren't really worrying about having big version differences. But you know, as we continued on to Sun and Moon, the anime had to, of course, acknowledge those differences. And they did that by technically picking Sun as their version because Ash battled Totem Gumshoes as one of the few totems he did battle. And Nebi ended up evolving into Sokaleo, not Lunala. So for them, it's like Sun was their canon version. Sword and Shield we'll never know because we didn't get a Sword and Shield series, but they would have had to pick which gym leaders Ash would face. I don't think they would have had him face both B and Alistair in Stow Inside. And same with Sir Chester, I don't think they would have had him battle two gym leaders. So they would have had to pick a canon version. But I think to myself, what if they didn't need to do that? What if they would have just had two split series going on where each could have been canon? And again, I know what you guys are saying. What do you mean two split series? Like it's gonna be two Ash Ketchums at the same time going on a journey? Well, no, because like I said, we're gonna be doing a series without Ash Ketchum. So in my ideal version, we would be going through, say the story of Black and White with two different characters. Hilbert could be going through the story of Pokemon Black, while Hilda could be going through the story of Pokemon White. Most things would be very similar, but we'd be seeing the characters on different journeys. And of course, I wouldn't want much repeat going on. I wouldn't be having both characters going through Pinwheel Forest. I wouldn't show them going through Castelia City doing the exact same things with Team Plasma. But we'd be seeing two stories from different characters' perspectives. And again, unlike if it was, say, two Ashes, Hilda and Hilbert would have two completely separate personalities. And that's something I really would like to show off. I think that would be something that would be so cool to show off in the series because I don't think the anime staff would ever really do anything like that. So I really want to do that here. And I want you guys to let me know in the comments, what would you do if you could do a series emphasizing the fact that the multiverse exists? And by the way, for anyone who isn't too familiar with the multiverse, I highly recommend you guys check out Matt Pat from Game Theory's video on the multiverse he did a while ago. It really just lays out everything and explains the whole concept of the multiverse, which is basically the idea that every single Pokemon version game is its own universe. Honestly, every single cartridge is its own universe. And these are things I really would like to see explored in the show because to me, it's just so interesting to think about. It's interesting to me to think about how there could be a universe where we're telling the story of the Galar region where it's Victor and he chooses Grookey as his starter and he ends up battling Gordy across his journey and B and he gets the rusted sword and he just basically just the story of sword whereas we can have a different universe where instead it's Gloria and she picks Sobble as her starter or score bunny and she ends up battling Alistair and Melanie in the league and she you know does the story with the rusted shield and she basically does the story of shield I think that would be so interesting to see in the anime and I know some people think this might sound crazy, but I think this would be good because it would cut down on filler immensely. You know, with the anime as it stands, they have to basically stretch it to last across three years because that's usually how long a generation lasts. But if they didn't have to worry about that, if they didn't have to stretch out time because they're focusing on just Ash and his companions and just doing their story across 
the entire three years, so they have to pad out time with filler. But if we had two separate characters going on their journeys at the same time, we could cut out the filler because we don't need to have it. Because we're going back and forth, one episode probably will be focusing on Hilbert, and the next will be focusing on Hilda. So we can be focusing on major events between both characters and not have to pad out time with filler because we're focusing on two different characters and their stories. Now of course we will have to repeat some elements like the gym battles, you know, we're gonna want to see everyone's gym battle, we're gonna want to see major catches, captures, what their team is going to be, but overall we don't need to really have characters of the day taking up time just to fill out time before we get from one city to the next because we can just focus on the two different characters and what they're doing in each location. Like I said, I know some people will react to this very negatively and they'll think this just sounds crazy, you know, this would not work for the anime, but I think it can work because honestly it's worked a lot with Pokemon Adventures manga. You know, they've done a lot of different things like this where we have one story focusing on one character and then we go to the next character. So I think it can work, guys. Just let me know in the comments how you guys would do it because I don't want to do what I think the anime staff would do. I want to do what I would do and I want to do what you guys would do. I want to do something that we all can enjoy. So, like I said, if you don't know too much about the multiverse, look into that. Look into the dialogue from Zinnia and the evil team leaders from Omega Movie and Alpha Sapphire, because like I said, it really explains exactly what the multiverse actually is. The next goal I want to accomplish with this series is focusing on the missed opportunities and the neglected features that I feel that the Pokemon anime has kind of just let slide by that they didn't really focus on all too much. Um, one of the biggest things, like I mentioned earlier, triple M rotation battles in Gen 5, those, I guess they weren't really a big part of the games, but they especially were not a big part of the anime. I think there was only one triple battle in the entire show, and it was just like a random battle in a filler episode. It wasn't even a major battle. I think it was a big missed opportunity to not have the Stride and Gym battle be a triple or rotation battle because it's three gym leaders that actually decided to face all three at least. In the games, of course, you only face one, the one that has an advantage over your starter. But Ash decided to battle all three, so I think it was just a huge missed opportunity to not have that be a triple or rotation battle. And you know, that's something I really want to focus on with these series, these things that kind of just didn't get as much attention. Things like using different Pokeballs. You know, of course, in the games, we didn't really see characters using different Pokeballs until Sun and Moon, so of course, in the anime, we didn't really see them doing that until Sun and Moon, of course. But I just want to show more of that. I always thought it was weird from the games and the anime, but mainly the games, you know, that we haven't seen characters use the different Pokeballs that exist. We saw Ash use, like, a lure ball, you know, Kurt making the different Apricorn balls. We saw them used a couple times by Ash, Brock, and Misty, but really not that much. And after that, you know, the Devon Corporation Pokeballs, you know, the Repeat Ball, the Timer Ball, all those Gen 3 Pokeballs, no one really used them, except Brendan in a movie cameo. The Gen 4 Pokeballs, the Heal Ball, the Dusk Ball, we really didn't see them used all too much. Again, this was primarily because of the games, so I'm not faulting the anime for that, but I just want to really incorporate that. Uh, incorporating things like using nicknames. Again, most main characters we've had didn't nickname their Pokemon. It was really just characters of the day, minor filler characters here and there. Um, again, in Sun and Moon, they started doing that a little bit. They had Lana nickname her Eevee, and only her Eevee. She had a Primarina the entire- well, a Pablio and then a Primarina in the show, which did not have a nickname, but for whatever reason when she caught her Eevee, she did choose to nickname him. Um, I thought it was kind of weird she didn't nickname her other Pokemon, but that's just what happened. Lily did nickname her Alolan Vulpix, she nicknamed it Snowy, but that was her only Pokemon. We didn't really see her with anything else, so we, we don't know if she would have nicknamed anything else, and no one else on the cast used nicknames. We know Ash never uses nicknames, so like I said, things I just want to see here and there, you know, just minor things that I thought would have been nice to see in the show that we really haven't seen too much. And again, I think that would work well with using different characters. If we're going to replace Ash each saga and have a different character, we can have one character who does nicknames, one who doesn't, you know, here and there we change it up. Something else I would like to see is a big one for me, customization, guys. I just love character customization so much. I think it's such a great thing to have in games and we really didn't get to see it all too much. It was introduced all the way back in Gen 6, 2013. That was almost 10 years ago by now. And honestly, in anime, all we really saw from customization was Serena cutting her hair and changing her outfit that one time. You know, at some point in the middle of the series, after her first showcase loss, actually, she cut her hair and decided to change her outfit, which was cool. That was nice to show off customization existing, but we really didn't see it after that. We didn't see it with her, of course. She just changed that look and kept that look until the end. I was really hoping we would see her change her clothes at least again. It is not necessarily seeing her hair grow out again, but 
I was hoping at the very least we'd see her change her outfit again, but that of course never happened. Ash didn't of course change his clothes. And moving on into Sun and Moon, we didn't get to see that, nor did we see it in Journeys. And I was really surprised that we didn't see it in Sun and Moon, because they gave Ash the basic default clothing for Ilio, which they never do with Ash. They had never given Ash the basic clothing of the male protagonist. They just, they gave him similar outfits, of course, but never the exact same outfit down to the backpack. They never did that. So when I saw that, I thought for sure Ash was going to change into a different outfit at some point during Sun and Moon, but no. They just kept him in Ilio's outfit, which kind of surprised me, but they did it. But I really would like to see more customization, guys. I just would like to see, again, bringing in these different characters, using the version that isn't the default version, you know? We all know the default character we see with who, you know, who usually has the pale skin and the black or brown hair. So I would just like to see the other characters represented. Why don't we include the blonde character? Why don't we use the darker skinned characters, the tan characters? And I would like to see the characters change their clothes over the course of the series. You know, they run up into a salon one day. Maybe it's been like 40 episodes and one day, you know, we have the characters change their clothing, change their hair, change their eye color with context. I know you guys are probably thinking, that's so minor, that's so unnecessary. Why even bother with that? Because it's a pretty big feature from the games. I don't know if you guys know just how big it was when they added customization to the games. So I think why not show that off with the with the new with the new anime series? You know, we saw, like I said, Serena, of course, she changed her clothes, but she still, it was the basic default version of Serena. I think it would have been so cool if, you know, by Sun and Moon they used maybe the darker or tanner skinned version of Celine. You know, they could use the blonde version of Gloria or Victor if they were to have shown up in the anime. If, you know, they could have changed their clothes, gotten a haircut, changed their hair up every so often. I just think that would be so nice to see, so I really would like to see that in the show. Of course, for my series, it's not going to be easy to really portray that or show that. There's not too much artwork for that. I might have to use a lot of, of course, game footage for this series, guys, but long story short, I really just want to focus on what I think are these really big missed and neglected opportunities. And even things like, you know, Sun and Moon really kind of neglected the island challenge, neglected Z moves. We didn't see too much of Z moves unless it was a big major battle since we didn't see too many totem battles. So those are things I want to focus on. Mega Evolution was kind of limited to the Mega Evolution specials. Gigantamax, Dynamax, of course, wasn't really focused on at all since we didn't get a Sword and Shield series. If we had, we probably would have seen Dynamax way more. At the very least, we would have seen it eight times in the eight gym battles. The major battles with Rose and Oleana if those carried on. So yeah, I just want to focus on those two types of things in my series. And you guys can let me know in the comments, what other neglected features would you have liked to see in the anime that didn't get to be shown? Let me know, and I really would like to incorporate those things in my series as well. My last goal for this series is to acknowledge multiple different types of Pokemon players. Yes, this is the anime, but Ash is meant to represent Red, the main character of the games, so this is meant to be sort of like us going through the games in an animated format. So of course I want to represent different types of players through this animated format. When I say different types of players, I mean things like people who don't just use a set team of six, people who rotate their teams around, people who don't like type repeats, people who, like I mentioned earlier, are nicknamers, all those different types of players, even sometimes maybe even competitive players. And I know I made an entire video about Ash's teams and things I dislike about his teams and things I like about his teams, and I know I mentioned in that video itself that I don't, I didn't like his Journeys team because it felt a lot like a competitive team, but I'm gonna say here that I wouldn't mind showing off a competitive team if it made sense. I didn't think, and I should clarify myself, I didn't think having a competitive team fit well for Ash. Because Ash as a character never felt to me like a competitive player. He just felt like a basic, generic person playing the game, a kid playing the game, having fun. I never thought of Ash as someone who took battling so, so, so seriously that he has to have the most perfect Pokemon ever. That's literally against what he stands for, actually. He was against Paul catching three Starly and only picking the one he thought was the strongest and releasing the other two. He didn't like Paul releasing Pokemon he just thought were too weak. Ash tends to just pick what he likes, what he bonds with, and use them properly. So that's why I didn't think having a competitive team fit Ash as a character, but I think it could fit another character separate from Ash. If we make a brand new character and that's their personality, wanting to have a strong team, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with focusing on that as a character so long as it's done well. Similarly to that, I know some of you guys are going to be hearing my comment about rotating teams and large teams and think to yourself, um, Sakura, what are you talking about? Don't you hate rotating teams? Don't you hate Ash's Unova team because he rotated the Pokemon around? I will say yes and no to that, 
I will say that I don't have an issue with the mere concept of catching a large team and rotating the Pokemon around. What I do not like is how it was handled in Unova, and how anytime Ash has caught more than 5 Pokemon and had a full team of 6, that he's handled it very poorly. If we look at Ash's Unova team, it was not handled well at all. On Ash's Unova team, for the vast majority of the time, he had on his team Pikachu, the 3 starters, and Scraggy, and that last slot was rotated around with one Pokemon every so often, and it was just that last slot that had to be rotated from, like, 5 others. Most of the time, it was either Crocodile or Levani. Other times, it might be Boulder or Unpheasant. And last of, of last, it would be Palpatode. That was not fair. That was not equal rotation. Equal rotation would be if we saw the starters Pikachu, Scraggy, and Boulder for like five episodes. And then the next five episodes, we saw Levani, Palpatode, Boulder, uh, Crocodile, you know, the different Pokemon that we didn't see before in that team. You know, taking the starters off the team and putting, you know, Unpheasant, Boldor, and the others on the team for five episodes or ten or however many it would be. That is how I think rotation should be done. Rotation should not be, we have the same five Pokemon on the team 99% of the time, and the last bit of time is being rotated around with the other captures. And they get very little screen time, they get very little development to themselves. If rotation was handled properly, if rotation was being done in a way that we saw all the Pokemon with near equal screen time, I would have no issues with rotation. I actually would welcome seeing a character who had more than just six Pokemon on at a time, or just six to seven, you know? If they rotated between 10, 20 Pokemon, if they rotated between all those Pokemon, but it was handled well, I would have no issue. The anime has usually over a hundred episodes to work with, so... I really don't see how it's that hard to rotate between, say, 10 or so Pokemon. They can do that well if they just rotate them properly and they don't just focus all of the attention on the starters. That's my issue with Ash's Unova team. That's my issue with rotation in the anime. It was never handled well. But I would applaud them if they could rotate a team and do it well. Just rotate them around every 10 or so episodes, every 5 episodes. It really doesn't matter what the number is. As long as they rotate them around and give them equal screen time and development. No, Palpatine got no development on Ash's Unova team. He existed just to battle. He existed purely to battle. We don't know what his personality was. We don't know what his likes and dislikes were. We don't even know if Palpatine knew Ash's other Pokemon. Aside from the ones he saw in battle, he saw Pikachu, of course. But did Ash... I mean, did Palpatine know any of Ash's other Pokemon, what their personalities were? I don't know. He barely... He never actually spent time with them outside of a battle. That's what... We never saw Palpatine just eating with Ash and Co. and the other Pokemon. We never saw that, so... We know pretty much nothing about Palpatode. That's what I didn't like. The fact that we got to see so much of Pokemon like Oshawa's personality, but never anything for Palpatode. If they could do rotation properly, I think it would be great to show off players who do large rotational teams. I think that could be handled so well. Just let us see all the Pokemon properly. Also, you know, just different things like seeing more type variety. I mentioned people who don't like type repeats. You know, Ash typically doesn't care about type repeats. I typically don't really mind type repeats all that much, but I know there are people who take that really seriously. So I would like to see things like that. And you know, Ash, you know, up until, you know, recently, Ash's teams are pretty consistent. He pretty much, he of course always has Pikachu on hand, but he would pretty much always get a grass type, a fire type, and a water type at the very least. And then, you know, just a flying type usually, and some other random type at the end, which could be dragon, ice, you know, normal, who knows what it would be. It really wasn't until we got to... Kalos, where that kind of changed, where all of a sudden Ash didn't get a grass type on his team. Then, you know, in Journeys now, he doesn't have a grass type or a fire type on his team. So they've done shakeups here and there, but I would like to see just, you can know, more variety, more differences in team building. So again, I think we can show these off really well once we're incorporating different characters in the show. And again, once you get to the multiverse, especially if we're going to be focusing on multiple characters at a time, each of them can have more varied teams, and we're not seeing just the same types over and over and over. This also allows just more Pokemon to be shown off in the spotlight. You know, with Ash, you know, we're pretty limited to just his team for the gym battles, seeing these Pokemon in the spotlight in the league, getting big major attention. And, you know, I can remember people being very, very upset, you know, when Ash didn't get Chespin and he instead got Froki. But, you know, just imagine... If we could see two characters and they get to show off all the starters, we get to see a character who has maybe one character has both Chespin and Finnegan and the third character has Froakie. 
I know a lot of people were very upset when Ashino didn't get Marsh Top when Brock got it because they said it was a waste to have on his team because Brock really didn't do too much. So Marsh Top as a starter didn't get as much attention as Combuskin with May and Blaziken and, you know, Ash with the Trico line. But if we got to see, again, two characters with all the starters, or at least two of them, we could see them all in more major roles. And if the rival had the third starter, then we could see all the starters in these major roles. And so I just think this will be more beneficial. We get to see more Pokemon in the spotlight. You know, we aren't just limited to what Ash and his companions own. We can see even more Pokemon being used. We can see the rival's characters being used, and so on and so forth. And of course, the last thing, the most important thing, the biggest missed opportunity that we've ever seen from the anime series, in my opinion, are the rivals. The rivals, I've spoken so many times about how the rivals have just been so neglected in the anime. They tend to just really like to focus on their own anime exclusive rivals like Paul and Trip and Alan. And the actual main in-game rivals have really just been kind of shafted. Even Gary, who's based off of Blue, really wasn't given all that much attention until Johto. Ash didn't even battle Gary until the end of his Kanto journey. So I really would like to see more focus on the rivals. Silver was never introduced. Mei, of course, was a main character. She wasn't a rival, so we didn't get to see that. Barry was introduced late. Hal was introduced late. Hop was just just trash, barely shown off at all. Sharon was shown off so late that it was a point where he was a gym leader. Bianca was shown off as a rival and she was shown off early but barely did anything. And I could just go on and on, but the rivals have never been treated too too well. They really just tend to focus on their own characters, Sawyer, and all those characters that they introduced in Univa Let Stefan, and just push the actual existing game rivals to the side, which I've never understood. They're sitting right there, fresh for the picking, for the anime staff to use, but they just usually neglect them, and I don't like that at all. So something I'm really going to incorporate with this series is just focusing on the rivals and giving them the attention that I think they deserve. But with all of that being said, those are my goals for my future anime series without Ash. Please, 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 please let me know in the comments how you guys would write an anime series without Ash. Let me know your ideas. If you had to go saga by saga, adding a new protagonist each time, who would you use? What would their personality be? What would their team be? How, what would their character be? How would they be a team builder? Let me know anything and everything because I want to incorporate your ideas into this as well. I want this to be a group effort. I want us to create the soccer reverse, guys. Let us create our own universe and series of what we would do if we could create an anime series without Ash. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you did, if you enjoyed this video, please again let me know what you would love to see and I hope I can get this series started very soon. I want to start working on it as soon as possible so I can get it out to you guys in the next upcoming year. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys then. I look forward to seeing any ideas you guys want to submit. Thank you and have a nice day.